Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and it shall be created. Let us pray, O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit may instruct the heart of the faithful, grant by this same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. So he said, Christ our Lord, amen. Thou Lord, open our lips. Incline to our aid, O God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And the church will say, Big Amen. Amen. May I be seated, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, this morning I have taken my home to be the blessings from the transfiguration the blessings from the transfiguration a special moment occurred on Mount Tabor for the three chosen disciples of the Lord Peter James and John it was an experience of a lifetime one that will fill them with strength and courage and then to prepare them for the agony in the garden when they will be chosen again to stay close to the Lord. It is important, brothers and sisters, dear brethren, that we learn the lessons from the transfiguration of Jesus in order to strengthen our faith. The church is very wise, the church is very powerful, the church is very methodic. A line upon line, precepts upon precepts, System after system, it releases mysteries to the children of God. To those who are wise and hearing, they will perceive and receive and run with it. But to those who are not intentional, whenever they come into the presence of the Lord, each year will just pass, month after month will pass, and they will never learn anything. These are the ones that we say, I don't like that priest. These are the ones that we say, oh, the mass is too long. These are the ones that we say, I have not seen the light. But an encounter with God changes that narrative. An encounter with God changes that narrative. If you want to go far in this Christian experience, you must have an encounter with God. It was a moment in the presence of God, the transfiguration. It was a moment of an encounter with God. It was, a, it was a moment of an experience with the splendor of God, of the Godhead in Jesus Christ. It, was, it revealed the presence of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, all united to grant that glory to Jesus. In the presence of what? The law and the prophet. The law symbolizes Moses. The prophet symbolized Elijah. And then in the presence of the new disciples, it was very intentional that the secret for your testimony, the power behind your testimony comes from what? An encounter. Encounters are very important, brothers and sisters, and we must never joke with the presence of the Lord. When you worship God in the flesh, there you will have so many lousy excuses. But when you have an encounter with God, you will be shocked and amazed at yourself and say, so I used to be the one that used to make these kind of lousy excuses. But now the Lord has taken the scale of my eyes. Then I can see. In this kingdom of God, we go forward and we rise by light, revelation. The light of God alighting upon you, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, grant you the grace to be able to partner with the spirit of prophecy so that your life becomes a beauty and a wonder. So many times we miss out of the presence of the Lord. We miss out of the benefits while we are in the presence of the Lord. We joke with the presence of the Lord. We commonize it because familiarity breeds content. And familiarity shouldn't breed content. Rather, it should breed what? Reverence. Every time we come into the presence of the Lord and we joke with Him, we miss out so much. I came up this morning, the while I was preparing my message, with about six reasons why people joke with the presence of the Lord. Number one is ignorance. 
Half knowledge is dangerous. The only thing that you need to know, brothers and sisters, is not just truth, it's the whole truth. The whole truth that comes upon you that you may know and understand that in God I have my life, I have strength, I have power. Ignorance and lack and a lack of understanding as to the richness, the beauty, and the wonders that are found in the Christ. Now, this is as a result of lack of proper catechesis. A lack of a culture of inculcating doctrines, the precepts of the word of God into the life of the children, the younger generation. And now it is not just tell them. It is that it must be what? Systematic. Methodic. And then we talk about a lack of mentors. Most times when we re receive the word from the sanctuary of the Lord and we return to our homes, it is, you only find it in pockets but not an overall appreciation or a perfect understanding that helps you to transmit methodically in deep context to the younger generation. This is what you heard at Mass. It is not everybody that will capture this that I'm saying at this point in time. And that is why we thank technology. God has given man wisdom. That is why a man can go back and say, let me rewatch this particular Am I a program or let me rewatch this mass because I heard something that I did not pick. Then you pay attention and then you pick it and then you can run with it, you can fly with it, then your life becomes a beauty and a wonder. Lack of understanding and ignorance. Number two, demonic oppression at work in the life of an individual. Hindering the person from possessing knowledge, from assessing light. It will keep you to the point where you only become nominal. You're only just a, 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 a what will I call it now? Someone who is a fan. Oh, I attend that church. But you are not a member. Inheritance are meant for the children. If you are not part of the life of a church, a part and person of the life of a grace, you watch it grow systematically. You cannot know what it's been transferred to you. More than just knowledge you sit in church, graces are impacted. Every time you come to mass, graces are impacted upon you. And if you are wise spiritually, you will receive by light this particular knowledge this particular grace you came to mass without a grace but then you came to mass and you encountered God and then you can return that I went to mass and just the word that I heard transformed my life it can be the psalm the psalm is there to help you usher in that particular experience so that you can remember the word of God. It can be the church wording. You loved the way the church wording methodically approached you. You loved the way the keyboardist played it. You loved so many aspects. The mass is a complete whole. That when you begin to follow it methodically, you don't choose only one part and leave the rest. From the beginning of mass, to the end of mass is a complete whole. A priest came to us here and he has never stopped talking about his experience in a lady star office. Yesterday he had to send me a mail and said, Father, send me the link of your program. I want to be part of it. An encounter with God. You see, you can just be in the house of God and you become laser fair with the things of God and you expect things to change you can be growing materially material growth does not guarantee eternal life what guarantees you a perfect eternal life is spiritual encounters demons can prevent you that the word of God you see why it's dangerous why the word of God is going on I told you yesterday for those of you who came for Saturday prayer you have been telling you my dear brothers and sisters, you are rich, you are the big man, forget that level and come for prayers. Stop giving excuses. Come for the prayers. 
Yes, I know you are tired. I know the road is somehow. Come. Come. Because every Saturday we prepare meal for you. The meal is that when you eat it, you will want to come back again. And I pray, each time you encounter the Lord, may your life be transformed for the better in the name of Jesus. The demons can come to you that when your word is about to come, that is a time that you want to ease yourself. That is time your phone will ring. And that is why it's dangerous to always put your phones on while you have mass. All the word of God is coming in and then the devil will seduce you to sleep. All in the name of what I am tired. And you begin to sleep and the word comes. You have been praying and be fasting all. And the word of God will alight upon you. And when it comes, it's searching. And he says, no, this person is not yet serious. And he moves away. I pray for you. May you not miss your season of what appeared in the mighty name of Jesus. The morning attack can prevent you from actually doing what? Receiving from God. Number two. Number three. Lack of a good spiritual director. A teaching priest. Who methodically built you up. If there are no teaching priests, brothers and sisters, men will cringe at the face of what? Disaster. You'll be running like sheep without shepherd, running from one pillar to post. But when a shepherd, a teaching priest is there, he creates stability. Stability. You come and listen. There, there is a burning, just one mass. Let me not put just a mass that is being celebrated. It takes a lot to put everything inside so that it can benefit the saints. It takes time. And what a teaching priest will require from you is to close your mouth from giving excuses and pay attention because when you learn, you can be able to do what? Withstand the attacks of the enemy. You can be able to be wise and as smart all the gimmicks and the tactics of the enemy in the field of work and wherever you find yourself. Very important. Number four, wrong information, knowledge and orientation. Being in gatherings where the presence of God is being com commonized, where you take the man of God for granted and you speak carelessly and then you do not know that evil deposits have been deposited in your mind. And the next thing you find yourself, you were not thinking like that. But all of a sudden, after that meeting, then you return and your, your perception has been changed. And then it becomes difficult for you to actually step into the direction and the dimension that the, the man of God is talking about because you have been with what the wrong cadre. And wrong information has come into you. Remember that when God came down to ask Adam, the first question he asked him when he was hiding away, he said, Who told you? Who told you? So who told you that the mass is not a worship? Who told you that the mass is not a prayer? Who told you that the mass is not a sacrifice? Who told you that the mass is not a thanksgiving? Who told you that the mass is long? Who told you that prayer is a waste of time? Who told you is the question. Very important. Who is speaking to you? You can come under an atmosphere of grace. And the next minute you leave out, someone will just come and deflate everything. And then you begin to walk in that wrong mindset and wrong approach. And then you open your mouth. Because wrong information has come into your heart has received it. Then the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, what happens? The mouth speaks it. So you begin to speak evil. And you never know that you are actually waging a storm against your life. Very quickly, move on there. Move again. The next one is being under a wrong spiritual climate or a weak spiritual climate. The essence of us having these encounters every now and then we come to pray that is fire always on the sanctuary is that you might be ignited. Say for example that Father Wisdom or Father Onia is not serious with the mass, not serious with anything. It's going to affect your faith. Believe it or not. It's going to affect you seriously. Your coming to church will not be enthusiastic at all. It's like a load coming upon you. No joy, you'll be filled with lethargy, lukewarmness, coldness, cold feet, burdens. 
But now, you are returning to the place where the Lord wants you to be. You are excited to come into the presence of the Lord. Every weekend, we are recording what? New members. What is drawing them to our Lady Star of the Sea? Are there no parishes around? The teaching priest. Very important. When you come under a spiritual atmosphere, it's to your advantage. Number one, it preserves you. Number two, it gives you the system to also grant you preservation in your work area. That is why you must always be serious when you come under the presence of the Lord. And another one, again, number six, for sake of time, is what? Changing priority. I am now, God has blessed me. I have forgotten God. The word of God tells you in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 14. Do not forget the Lord when you become rich. When you have gotten everything that you wanted, and you now forget God. And in verse 16, it tells you, remember that it's not by your strength, not by your own hand that you have become successful. It is by the arm of the Lord. You were fasting before. You were very serious, running from one prayer house to another. But the day God granted you all that all your heart desired, you now became what? Look one. I forbid that in your life in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear that. Amen. amen. So that you are wise. That you know that as you are walking, as you are climbing, one arrow from the pit of hell, called sickness, called affliction, can crash everything. You think you have money? Don't worry. One sickness from the pit of hell can take away man's resources. Everything that you have invested upon, you just see them eating away the hand of the enemy, the devourer. I pray for you, my beloved parishioners, those who hear the word of God that I was speaking from this sanctuary. May the Lord preserve you, preserve your family in the mighty name of Jesus. I just last week, last two weeks, a man who has been doing so well, where did sickness come from? He's on life support now. Sickness eating away his resources. Your hard labor, child of God, your hard labor, your sufferings, your labor, afflictions will not come to take it away in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have given you six reasons why men joke with the presence of the Lord. Then there are also benefits of an encounter in the presence of God. What is a spiritual encounter? A spiritual encounter is what? A sense of connection to something bigger than ourselves. A spiritual encounter is a name given to that experience that leads you to a transformation. Encounters are very important, brothers and sisters. An encounter with God births you into a new season of grace. The secret to preservation, when we talk about preservation, is in five areas. God preserves your life, God preserves your family, God preserves your endeavors, God preserves your possessions, God preserves your what? Your reputation. God preserves your encounters because he gives you insight on how you walk. You walk circumspectly, you walk wise. Number three, an encounter with God is the reason for your what? Your confidence. With God on my side, I fear no evil. Somebody ask you, what is the secret of your strength? The blessed Eucharist. The blessed Eucharist will just remain, just uh, dropping the monstrance and the blessed toes inside of it until you encounter it and you give it a name. Because you will say, I encountered the Lord at the lowly star of the sea. It is called my Ebenezer, my helper. So I am going to encounter my helper. I'm going to encounter the Lord of my life. I'm going to encounter the yoke breaker. I'm going, to encounter, I'm going to encounter the God who has saved me from distress. An encounter with God brings clarity to your vision. An encounter with God. An encounter with God helps you, gives you a clarity again to your spiritual assignment. An encounter with God. An encounter with God sets you on the path of what destiny fulfillment. Saul's life turned around by a divine encounter. His name became Paul after that experience. An encounter with God fills you with deep and renewed joy. The joy of the Lord is what? My strength. Every now and then you are renewed. Joy upon joy. 
because I stay in the presence of God. You can see what Peter said. Lord, it is wonderful for us to be here. What gave him that in an encounter? Yesterday when we were praying, we end at 9.30. But when I told you it was 10 o'clock, all of you opened your mouth and say, ah, 10 o'clock, we never knew. When you are in the presence of God, you have forgotten every other thing. You enjoy the presence of God. And then you are filled. Encounters grant you the staying power. The staying power. Strength and authority. The staying power. Encounters. And encounters with God, an encounter with God delivers you from misdirection in your life. An encounter with God brings about a guarantee of total self-transformation. Jo Jacob encountered God and his name was changed from what is a supplanter to what one who is what a carrier of grace, a dispenser of grace from him to the 12 tribes of Israel. 12 sons of Israel now known as the 12 tribes of Israel. An encounter with God grants you an opportunity to hear and listen to the voice of the Lord. There is a voice for you in every season you get into. Every location, every place you go to, there is a voice. And it's important for you to hear that voice. What is the Lord saying to me in this position? What is the Lord saying to me in this company? What is the Lord saying to me? Have I heard the voice of the Lord? If the Lord has not spoken, I will not make a move. I will not be able to do what God, what, what, I'm, what I'm going to do unless the word directs me. The word of God. You heard the transfiguration. This is my beloved son. In whom I am what? Well pleased. What did he say? I want to hear your church. What did he say? Listen to him. An encounter. You hear the voice. So you do not make wrong movement. You are guided intelligibly. And that is what we call the spirit of discernment. Somebody here, he has a hearing ear. He has the seeing eye. Discernment. You need discernment more than anything in this wicked world where men are out there to do what take an advantage of your destiny, of your glory, to cover you. You need it. More than running from one man to another. I will share enough money. If those of you can come for money mass, come for money mass. Stop saying to yourself, I am tired. That moment of tiredness can be a moment when God will grant you a shift in your destiny. Very importantly, dear brothers and sisters. Each time I climb here, it's like a fire burning inside of me. That if I have an opportunity to open your mind and pour everything inside at once, I will do it. And again, time does not prevent me to go deep. Child of God, an encounter with God will give you the propensity to go further. You will press. I will press. I will press. Now, what are the requirements of having an encounter? If you want to have an encounter, brothers and sisters, remember, I, encounters are different from one person to another. It is the same Lord, the same Spirit that grants this. Different. Somebody's encounter might come as I'm preaching. Somebody's encounter might come while the Eucharist is going on. Someone's encounter might come while the music is going on. And that is why I'm begging my choir. All the ministries in Our Lady Star of the Sea. All the ministries. Lectors, altar servers, church warden, all that. Don't do your job out of work like a spare time. Don't do your don't do your assignment. It is better that you never climbed a rope than you say to yourself, I just want to be there. Because it takes time to know God, it takes time to do the things of God. Don't come and do the work haphazardly because God does not mind to wait for you. Go and learn from Hezekiah. You are, you are every day you're making effort. You are moving every day. Is a secret to preservation. Hear what I said earlier. Secret to preservation. The secret to longevity in your life is what? An encounter with God's service with understanding. It protects your destiny. Look at Hezekiah. As he encountered God, what happened? When they came to him and said, you're going to die, he said, remember how I have what? Saved you. So it becomes advantage to you, advantage, option, and position for you. 
Don't joke with the things of God. You're in the harvest committee. You're in the finance. You're in the whatever thing you are doing. So long as you're around me walking, make sure you walk with understanding. Don't try to say you want to cheat or you want to do anything. It is not me you're doing. You're going to do yourself a harm, a great harm. So it is wise that as you are walking with God, be wise. The Lord teach us a number of years, oh God, that we may grow wise. Secret of an encounter. So what are the requirements? Number one, you must have passion for God. If anything steals your passion for God, it's a real attack. If you have lost steam, if you have lost passion for God, may the Lord refill you in the name of Jesus. You must have a burning desire to grow spiritually. This is called hunger. You must have hunger for God. Number three, you must have deep love for God. Very deep love for God. Number four, you must have a desperate need for a change in your life. Lessons from the transfiguration. Number one, Jesus prayed. So he tells you that while Jesus was praying, the countenance of his face transformed. So prayer does something for you. That while you are praying, you are transforming to a better version of yourself. While you are praying, God is raising an army for you. While you are praying, God is removing obstacles from your path. While you are praying, you are moving, you are building stamina. You are building capacity. While you are praying, the Lord is granting you clarity of vision. While you are praying, you are being renewed. That when men behold you, oh, you have been in a, in a disadvantaged position. But now, you have not come to see that God has placed you in a what an advantaged position. Any man or woman who is in this house of God, in a disadvantaged position, may the Lord shift you into a new season in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear a better amen? amen? Transfiguration was the answer to the needs, to the needs of men. Jesus took them to a high mountain. You need the mountain experience where you'll be alone with God. It is called a secret place. It is in the secret place that you will hear, you will learn the word of the Lord. The secret place is very important for you to grow stamina. The secret place is where you are transformed. The secret place is the place where you dwell in the presence of the Lord and you know that God preserves you. The secret place is where you run away from what? Confusion of the day. The secret place is a place where you are able to make decisions for your life. The secret place is a place where you receive intensive training. The secret place is a place where you receive renewed strength for the journey. The secret place. The transfiguration granted an opportunity to experience the strength of the glory of God. The glory of God. Transformation means a change into another form, a transformation, a change of countenance, a complete change. The glory of Jesus had, the glory Jesus had with God, it was seen at that particular transfiguration. The transfiguration granted the apostles, the apostles of the Lord, the strength of what? A heavenly experience. Lord, it is wonderful for us to be here. Granted them joy and peace, a foretaste of the beatific vision of the Lord. They were able to have it. An encounter with God and the, 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 the transfiguration birthed the strength of God's presence. A cloud covered them. And there was a voice. This is my son in whom I am what world. Well pleased, listen to him. Terror. They were afraid. You will know that you've had an encounter with God and the secret and the real thing that will help you to know that you've had an encounter with God is that God will tell you, fear not. But it's an encounter with a demon, an evil spirit, you will always be afraid. But an encounter with God grants you peace, reassurance. Look at the encounter with Mary. Be not afraid. So when, I, when the transfiguration occurred, the disciples were afraid. But Jesus came and touched them. Be not afraid. Let us go. The transfiguration is very important. The transfiguration reveals to you and I the Shekinah of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. The light of his presence. The light of God's presence is very important. And then you are able to listen to God. Now we are having family week. There is a beauty of listening to God. Listening to God means living with God. 
families today brothers and sisters must develop strength the strength of will and the renewed desire to listen to Jesus it is only when families return to the place of what listening to Jesus will they be able to face the challenges in married life and also in family life God's plan for every couple is that you come to joy and peace they come to joy and peace you are going through a challenge it is not by being by, by, by being provoked and then shouting and all that no you will know that you are able to listen to God and as you listen to God your life is transformed he gives you the secret to handle a challenge and like listening to God by listening to God you learn to take your spiritual life very seriously. You will know that our family is under attack and we need to pray, listening to God. Listening to God helps you to communicate in love with one another. It will help you, to guide you. By listening to God, we grow in discernment for the family. Married couples, you grow in discernment. By listening to God, you will know when God wants you to speak about a certain reality or not. Jesus prevented them for what? Speaking about the transfiguration. Why? It will be too early to talk about the resurrection. They will not understand it. So there was a time for it. After the resurrection, they will talk about it. But now while Jesus was still with them, they, will, they could not talk about it. It is called the Messianic secrecy. There are certain secrets that God, you and God has had alone that only you need to know about it. You don't need to tell another person. So what God has revealed to you is not secret for all. There are secrets for all. There are messages for all. There is, there's your own personal message. And when you listen to God, he will grant you this. My dear brothers and sisters, we must continue to pray and ask God in his mercy to give us the grace to always do that which is pleasing to God. When we listen to God, our lives become easier and better. May the Lord help us to always listen to him that we may grow wise, stronger and better now and forever through Christ our Lord. This book is on what sale outside there. Brothers and sisters, we encourage you to get one copy for yourself. This week has been dedicated to families. We encourage you, father, mother, young ones, please come for this program. Today, today is the opening of it. From tomorrow, throughout the evening, we shall have evening masses throughout. You need you to come for this program so that you can be educated properly. You need secrets to overcome your challenges in life. There is also the program for the youth. Youth, after this month, we need you to meet someone outside there who has a message for you. The third one is that our children, next week from the, fifth, from the 13th, they'll be having what they call an ex, an, a, a preparation for the excursion which is coming up upper Saturday. We need you mothers, daddies, fathers, to please allow your children to come for this program. And as you do so, may our lives be preserved from evil now and always through Christ our Lord. Bow your heads and meditate on what you have heard. May the Lord bless this word in our hearts through Christ our Lord. May we rise now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father.